A big thank you comes to you today from Dead Rabbit via Patreon for his long support of the channel. Tetsuol versus Alila this time, and again we have a wheel, so if we don't do too well then we can at least do that, so we'll keep. Want to make sure to get into another coloured land, because Inventor's Fair won't get our commander down for us. We can get down Delicos in the meantime though, so let's see what we draw into here, hopefully it's a coloured land. I actually don't have an equipment for our commander yet either. Alright, Brainstorm puts us closer, uh, so go for the Underground Sea. And we'll just do the Brainstorm. Yeah, we'll do the Brainstorm now. I don't see that our opponent's going to influence us on that, and I don't want them to counter that. Okay, Hammer of Nizan is obviously an equipment. We get a Coloured Land there, so let's go for the extra turn. And we'll put the Time Twister on top. It should be safe there. Okay, our opponent just passing with Blue Mana held up, so it may well be that they've got Counter Magic for our Commander. So let's try and get down the Delicos here. That came down pretty quick, so maybe not, but we've at least got mana held up to get down an equipment straight away here. Getting summoning sickness away from Delicos isn't the worst. Tapping that blue mana down into the Baleful Strix, so they must have just drawn into that this turn, unless they held it off last turn for counter magic, maybe. So we're one mana shy of getting down our commander and the Hammer of Nazan here, unfortunately. But I think we have to go for our commander here and hope they don't have removal held up. So we'll just pass like that and hope that our opponent can't do anything about our board here. They didn't go for Swords or Path, so I'm guessing they don't have it. They did have a White held up during our turn. So seeing Alila, Artful Provocateur, luckily we have Indestructible on our commander potentially. So the Death Touch doesn't really matter. I'm guessing this is a Flying Tribal list. Baleful Strix swings in at us for two, gets a plus one buff on its power. Okay, drawing to a land, our opponent still has seven cards in hand. So we could go Temporal Manipulation here, just for the sake of drawing an extra card, because I think I'm going to go Hammer of Nizan Time Twister anyway. So hopefully our opponent doesn't scoop to this. Because a lot of players don't like extra turns. But that's a pretty bad extra turn as extra turns go. Alright, and that does get us into an additional land, that's really good. Uh, so in that case... It's Bloodstained Mire, and that can be well, shocking a watery grave with that. Then it's Hammer of Nazan coming into play. That is plus two to power and indestructible. It does equip itself as well. So we'll start trying to hit commander damage on our opponent. Might as well play Artful Dodge as well, because we're about to shuffle everything around anyway. Swinging in, this can't be blocked. And that triggers the Tetsuo. Uh, instant or sorcery with mana value at four or less. And that is the Time Twister here. Draws us into a bunch of extra stuff. Don't have double strike, unfortunately. Um, yeah, and we can't get into double strike, so we'll just have to allow our commander to hit for five here. Apparently shouldn't have gone for the Artful Dodge. We could have had rid of the Alila anyway, if they decided to block, which they wouldn't have done. And yeah, could have had Brass Knuckles down here, but yeah, not to worry. I'll hold on to the Profane Tutor, because that is just going to be a free tutor for us next turn. Mist Vane Border Post from Alila. Puts a fairy token in the way, so could potentially win next turn with double strike and tainted strike, but they may well just throw something in the way here. Alright, and they're getting two swords to plowshares anyway, so that really does slow us down. We will put our commander into the command zone and gonna have to recast it next turn. Then casting Throne of the God Pharaoh, so when they start swinging in with fairies, they're gonna be dealing a lot of damage to us. We do have time here, I think. Four damage dealt to us by the two flyers on the left there. And then we take two further damage to the throne of the god pharaoh. Alright, sword of the animus. We're actually drawing into a lot of our basics here, so I'm not sure how useful that's going to be to us. So I'm wondering if we should go Jingataxius here. I think getting summoning sickness away from our commander is more important. So down comes our commander again. And might as well play sword of the animus, I suppose. It does get a free equip. That does have flying in haste now because it's equipped thanks to the Dalakos, but yeah, I think they might just double block with these two, so I'm not going to risk losing my commander. I'm going to force them to remove it. Maybe should have gone for the Brass Knuckles instead because we could have got that out with the Dalakos. But I'm thinking I'd rather surprise my opponent with that. Intangible Virtue, buffing up their stuff even more. Their tokens get plus one, plus one and flying now. Mirror Maid into play, going to become a copy of an enchantment or an artifact. 
And that is another copy of the Throne of the God Pharaoh, so that likely deals 8 damage to us this turn. Okay, so going to hit us for 10 here. And like I said, it's going to be... Oh, in my distraction here. Yeah, this isn't legendary, and they've also got Vigilance creatures, so the creatures do need to be tapped. Not taking anywhere near as much damage there. Should have taken even less, because I should have blocked here. Uh, right, anyway. That is a Magnetic Theft, which I don't think... We're going to make use of here with Hammer of Nazan in play. Could just put the Hammer of Nazan on our commander with it. Let's throw out a land. Yeah, I'll go Magnetic Theft here onto the Hammer of Nazan. That can go straight onto Tetsuo. And then we'll go through to the attack phase. We've got a chance of winning here. Uh, Tetsuo can deal damage to any target. We'll get rid of their commander here. It's done enough damage. Sword of the Animus. We'll see how many basics we have left. I haven't grabbed any swamps yet. Okay, I've actually put more basics in here than I realised, probably because of Sword of the Animus, so get a swamp out with that. And then I'll see how my opponent blocks first, and then I'll see if we can cast the Ember Cleave and... Okay, they're deciding to just take it here, so... Yeah, that means that we can win this one. Ember Cleave into play is going to be plus one, plus one. Equips itself, but Hammer of Nizan does it anyway. But yeah, this now has Double Strike, Flying, Haste, Indestructible, and Trample. So even if they had blocked with a few things, uh, we could have potentially got them anyway. Go for the Tainted Strike on our commander. Going to make it an 8-5 with Double Strike and Infect. Alright, take them down to 16 points of Infect and 21 points of Commander damage actually, which I didn't realise. So yeah, beat them twice there. I think that's a good game to show off what you can do with Tetsuo, Imperial Champion. We'll try one more, I think. Tetsuo versus Jensen. We have some counter magic if our opponent decides to go fast on us, can refill our hand and ruin our opponents, hopefully, so yeah, don't see why we wouldn't keep that. Seeing a Sarah Ascendant on turn one from our opponent. And there we see a demonic tutor, so yeah, I don't think we're gonna be countering anything we care about next turn. So maybe go for the demonic tutor here. Can maybe buy some time from our opponent here and go for Toxic Deluge, because I dare say they get their commander out next turn. So I'll just chew to that out. They do get a breeding pool out. That is Sakura Tribe Elder. So deciding to ramp before getting down their commander. We'll take the hit for six. And there we see a command tower. So yeah, it might be good to get down the uh, Galazeth before we go for the Wheel of Fortune anyway. We'll hold up Mana Drain here. We see a Lizard Blades from our opponents. So yeah, I think we just have to pull the trigger on the Toxic Deluge at this point. Get down Underground Sea. See if our opponent has any counter magic for us. They've got four cards in hand. And we do manage to wipe successfully. A consider is look at the top card of the library. Can put it into the graveyard and draw. They did decide to put it on top. Now seeing a strip mine from our opponent. They decide to just use that straight away. And there we see Dranith Magistrate. And a Stoneforge Mystic. So we're actually at the point of refilling their hand here. Drop the mountain and we can go for the Galazeth. So can't hold up the mana drain now because our opponent took the command tower away from us. Our opponent throws out a Gavany Township. And there is a Serum Visions, Draw and Scry 2. Oh, I've just noticed they've got a companion actually. Yeah, Lurus is their companion in this deck. And they pay to put Lurus into their hand there. You have to put 3 mana into putting your companion into your hand now. So let's draw into another Shockland. They could have just been using the excess mana to get Lurus into hand, but it might be that they really want Lurus in their hand as well, so... Yeah, and obviously we don't want to be dealing with this thing again, so... We'll shock in the Watery Grave, and then cast the Wheel of Fortune. That puts them up by a bunch of cards, I'm not sure how oh, they tutored for the Lion Sash there, so... Making them discard the Lion Sash, as well as the Lurus. Like I said, they went up three cards there, but... Uh, we still got them to discard some good stuff, so yeah, not particularly liking what's in our hand now, annoyingly. Again, going down a land hurts us here, because we could have gone Mizzix's Mastery onto the Wheel of Fortune again if we wanted to. Anyway, we'll start hitting them with the Galazeth, could have given it double strike before the wheel, but obviously didn't know what we were going to draw into. Of course they drew into Mana Crypt, <laughs> yep, a Mox Diamond as well, so this is a really powerful 1v1 deck by the looks of it. A Sator Wayfinder now. They've gone straight down to three cards in hand. Discarding an Urborg, Snapcaster, and a Giver of Runes. Revealed a Marsh Flats to us with that. 
They decided to put a plus counter on all of their stuff with the Gavany Township, so it might have to be Toxic Deluge again next turn. That draws us into an equipment in Unsythe, Killer of Kings. So we'll swing in at our opponent for three more damage. They have held up double blue mana here, so they could counter the Mizix's Mastery, but we'll go for the Mizix's Mastery here. Actually, we'll go for the Time Warp here. That makes sense, because then we can get down another land and overload this next turn. And if they counter this, then they were always going to anyway. All right, that goes through straight away, so we get another turn after this, and yeah. Oh, all right, our opponent scoops to that, so, uh, well, what the plan was there. Yeah, go for Mizix's Mastery now, after dropping a land, overload everything. Uh, team of Battle Rage can land six damage on them, which they're not really worried about there. And then we can go Toxic Deluge again, we can go for Demonic Tutor again, uh, get another extra turn. We'll have Mana Drain held up for if they can even counter any of this stuff, and then wheel after all that if we don't like what's in our hand. Yeah, well, there we go. Tetsuo versus Halana and Elena. <laughs> With a bunch of lands. I'm actually going to keep that because we can go for the Signing Blood on turn 2. And we can get down our commander on turn 3, so... Yeah, don't actually hate that. Drawing into an Ancient Tomb, which is good with the Urborg, so we'll drop the Urborg here. And we'll cast the Signing Blood, going up to 7 in hand, getting into some equipment in Reva Cleaver. And the Dark Steel Plate. Our opponent has exiled a Mox Tantalite, which I always miss. Experiment 1 into play. And we'll just have to hope our opponent doesn't have removal here. It's rare that you see anyone with Lightning Bolt draw into a Batter Skull. Yeah, we can actually play and equip the Dark Steel Plate next turn, so drop an island and go for our commander. Krenko Tin Street Kingpin into play, which we are definitely going to blow up here, I think. Okay, Chandra's Ignition, so we've got our board wipe here. Drop the Ancient Tomb, we will take two life to that. And play out the Dark Steel Plate. Then equip that to our commander, so now it has Indestructible. And we can start swinging in here. Triggering our commander, so now we can Lightning Bolt that Krenko before it comes too much of a problem. The Mox Tantalite coming into play now, so that's an additional mana for them this turn. They get their commander into play with First Strike and Reach, doesn't matter against an Indestructible commander. And this thing is now a 5-5, so they're going to try and outrace us, I dare say, and they do. Unfortunately for them, we can just blow up their commander next turn. Okay, more effect, engrafted exoskeleton, which we could actually go for here. But I think our opponent scoops to that, so we will get down some more red mana here, I think. Actually, we don't need to yet, do we? Let's just play the Reaver Cleaver. So now we've got 4 power, we can swing in here and lightning bolt the commander out of the way again. And then we hit our opponent, and that will make us some treasure tokens. Not going to play out the Grafted Exoskeleton. I do have to play around the fact that my opponents might scoop. And it's probably best to surprise my opponent with that anyway, because if we can win in the same turn we play it, then that would be ideal. They get down a Tireless Tracker. The Experiment 1 is still a 5-5. Playing a Forest into the Tireless Tracker will make a Clue token, and they can crack it here thanks to the Mox. And that's exactly what they do, putting a plus counter on that. This still has three toughness, so we can blow that up as well. Yeah, and our opponent scoops there. Trying again, it's Tetsuo versus Zaxara this time. Uh, Conqueror's Flail is good. We've got mana for our commander. Eh, it's risky, but I'm not having the best of time getting into games this play session, so I'll play this one. And Infernal Grasp will be good to hold up for their commander. Let's throw out the Conqueror's Flail here so that we don't have to play it later. Seeing a Vamp Tutor from our opponent, which is why they brought in the Bayou untapped, so they'll draw into whatever they tutor for at the beginning of their turn. We see a Mox Diamond from our opponent, and they discard a Twilight Mire. They're down to two cards in hand, not sure what they mulligan down to. And then put the Twilight Mire back on top with the Noxious Revival, holding up... A couple of blue mana potentially, they've only got one card in hand and we know what they're drawing into next turn. Uh, so let's drop the mountain that we just drew into and we'll challenge them to have something for our commander. Apparently they don't, they allow that and go through to their turn, dropping the Twilight Mire. And then we see Zaxara hit play, which I will definitely be throwing removal at next turn. Okay, team of battle rage is good to hold on to later when we can threaten commander or infect damage. Let's drop the swamp. Uh, go for hard casting the Infernal Grasp onto our opponent and hope they don't scoop to that. 
Yep.